Okay, man, so you just learned about GPU and D to D, and it's just so powerful. We're in building 41 now, just like that, with some very esteemed people. Please introduce yourself. I'm John Montgomery. I'm the GPM of the Browser Programmability and Tools team. I'm Steve Luco. I'm the chief architect of the same team. And I'm Sean Kuniyoki. I'm the general manager of the same team. Excellent. So when we were in uh, the IE building, we were talking about performance, improvements, security, compatibility. All of those things resonate with your team, the JavaScript engine, JScript engine, JavaScript engine, right? Yep. JScript's no longer or something. But So let's uh, talk about what you guys have done. Cool. Well, we've been working on a bunch of performance optimizations around the JavaScript engine for the next version of IE. One of the things we've heard pretty clearly from customers is we need to get better there. Uh, so um, we've done a bunch of work in the core JScript engine, and I'd actually like to show you that stuff so you can see some of the progress we've made. Absolutely. Uh, and then we can have a conversation about some of the work we actually did to do that. So cool. Let me, uh, let me do a couple of quick things. Excellent. The first one is uh, I'm going to fire up a, a quick build of Internet Explorer here that has our engine in it, um, just to show that this is real. I don't know if, how close you can get, but this build was done this morning at 10 a.m. of the JScript DLL. Um, so it's fresh bits. Um, and I will we'll pull it up. And before we actually get into SunSpider, let me, uh, let me just show you that this is actual real working software, because obviously one of the hardest things about this is uh, uh, compatibility. So actually getting the web to, web to run. So what I'm showing here is uh, kind of logging into my Hotmail account. Um, and uh, I'll send a, a piece of mail to myself running on this, this new JavaScript engine. And I'll send it to my Gmail account. I'll just say hello channel 9 and we'll put some text in here so there's some text in here and some typos and I can actually you know it, it does pretty much everything uh, we're talking about you can see the little red squiggly here on the spell check and so on and uh, I will send this message off to my Gmail account and uh, let's quickly pop over and sign into my um, Gmail account so that's mail.google.com And you'll see Hello Channel 9 sent moments ago. And I can uh, compose a piece of mail. I can reply to this one. Um, why don't we just compose a new piece of mail? Hello Channel 9, back at you. Except my spelling Back at you. I like that. Yeah, whatever. I'm a classic That's a good one. Nerd. Right on. So we'll have some more spelling <laughs> errors in here. And again, you know, that's probably the single biggest thing here. I mean, these sites, although we use them every day, uh, they are pretty significant sites in terms of testing compatibility. They're downloading tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of lines of JavaScript code wow. that we're executing here. So it's a pretty good test of the compatibility. Um, but it's really hard to get a sense of the improved performance we have in the engine from this. Uh, and there is a, a benchmark that is used pretty commonly to, to actually test this. Um, you can argue about whether it's a good benchmark or a bad benchmark or whatever. And it's certainly only one dimension of browser performance. Right now, we're just focused on performance of the script engine. Um, and it's called SunSpider. Um, and it just runs through a bunch of kind of fairly low-level JavaScript primitives. Uh, it gives you a sense of, of the perf of the browser. So I'm going to fire this up. OK. And for those of you who are real SunSpider aficionados, if you take a look at the screen when you run this, you'll notice that we're whipping through these numbers a lot faster than 8 was. Um, we're still pretty early in the development process. Um, there's some stuff we know we can still squeeze out of the engine. but. Um, we're doing a lot better than we were. And a lot of that is due to some of the low-level architectural changes, probably one of the biggest of which is that we now generate native code. Mm. But to talk about that, I'd really like to um, kind of hand it over to Steve Luco. Right on. The architect on this. And uh, so, Steve, over to you. <laughs> so what makes those demos work? Yeah. Um, I guess is the question for me. Sure. Uh, so first of all, we... We have several principles that we used when we designed the, the new engine. Mm. Um, in addition to getting great perf, competitive perf, uh, we wanted to be able to maintain great compatibility with existing websites. Um, we wanted to make sure that there was excellent security in the browser. Um, we also wanted to make sure that there was a lot of transparency, so if people were writing JavaScript code and they wanted to figure out, well, why is this running slow or why is this running fast? They could do so. They, they would have the instrumentation in uh, easily accessible in the code to do that. So um, those were some of the other principles that were key in designing this thing. Mm. And then in, in terms of performance, 
there are a few things we did. So the, the, the basic thing we did was we, that we changed the object model. Um, the, the former uh, the engine, the IE8 engine, it, it, it was using uh, COM variants as the sort of the core data structure mm. um, and interpreting over those. And uh, some of you may, may know that COM variants are a little bit big. <laughs> um, and so uh, we changed the object model uh, to be uh, where, the, where a basic JavaScript object is really more like a, a, a void star. It's either a tagged mm. integer or a pointer to a small data structure. Um, called an object header, and then the object header in turn points at a slot array, which is an array of um, slots. Each one holds a property. Mm. Okay, because um, as many of you know, JavaScript is all about storing properties and retrieving properties. Yes. Okay. Um, once you have that, then the next thing you want to know is well, for a given ar object, where is the the property? Which slot offset is it at? And um, if you go and look that up in a hash table every time, which is what we were doing in, in previous versions, that can get kind of slow. So instead, um, we're using a dynamically evolving uh, data structure, a, a hidden class, to tell us for a given object uh, where, say, the X property or the Y property is located. Mm. Um, and that gives you a much faster uh, path in the native code. John alluded to that um, now we're also generating native code. So we generate native code, and there's a fast path. There's a thing called, in, in the industry, polymorphic inline caching, which simply means that instead of looking up which slot the property is every time, you see if the object still has the same uh, dynamic type, which is also called hidden class. Mm. And if it does, you just run through the fast path, uh, which is just a few instructions that goes and grabs that property at the same slot that it was, and that greatly...